make them feel welcome. Ready? All right. Well, what we are looking at is Philippians chapter 2, actually part 2. And, and when I think of this, I think of the 1977 song by the Little River Band, Hang On, Help is on the Way. And when I read this chapter, it's a way for me to be able to study it, a way for me to be able to remember it, because as Paul and Timothy are writing to the church at Philippi, he wants to be there. He wants to go back to Philippi. But Paul is in a little bit of a predicament that he can't get back to Philippi. How come? Anybody in here know why Paul can't get to Philippi? Because he's in jail again. I don't know what this guy keeps doing to get in jail, but he sure does stir up, uh, stir the pot, and he's in jail again. And you know what? When you're in ministry, you often find those that don't always like what you have to say, and Paul seemed to run and encounter those people. Well, but he had all intention. Hang on. Help is on the way. I am planning to get there just as fast as I can. When I get out of here, I'm coming to see you. When I get out of this predicament, when I get out of this spot, you are in my heart, on my mind, and in my radar. I'm coming to see you. Well, let's look tonight, chapters 2, and we're going to look at verses 19 through 30. And primarily, who we're going to look at is some key characters that we're going to focus in on tonight. Jesus Christ, of course, he is our key and our focus, but Paul, Timothy, and Epaphroditus. These are three names that really will come to mind other than Jesus Christ, Paul, Timothy, and Epaphroditus. And let's just backtrack here and look at verses 19 through 22. Paul writes about Timothy and his soon anticipated visit. He's looking forward to being there. He can't wait to get there. Let's look at verse 19. But I trust in... I'm going to back up just a moment just to give us a little history. Let's back up to 17 through 19. Yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service for your faith, I joy and I rejoice with you all. For the same cause also do you joy and rejoice with me. Be joyful. And, and we've seen that back still, the theme of chapter 2. There's joy in serving. There is joy in serving, and that's what Paul's talking about. He is rejoicing in service. There, I, I was going to give a formal thank you here at the end once I brought the message, but I'm going to jump ahead. Last night, we had our Lake Cumberland Baptist Associational meeting here, and I would just want to, I'd like to tell each and every one who participated, prayed, or helped in some fashion or form, thank you, because I saw you all being the church that I know you are, Loving and working together and helping serve those that are on the front line serving this community and, and our county and those pastors and those folks. And you guys served them last night. And you did it with laughter. I didn't see nobody begrudging or upset or aggravated to make sandwiches or, uh, you know, put together desserts and hand out drinks and decorate tables. There's joy and serving. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. It's joy. It wasn't, it's not work when you're doing it for the Lord. And if it, that's the mindset. Paul says, I counted a joy in the service, and we should all count it a joy in the service. Now, what he does say here is this, but I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy, or Timothy shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I Know your state. Now, what does it say? I, I love this because what Paul says at the very beginning of verse 19, but I trust in the Lord Jesus. Man, I had to underline that in my Bible. I hope you all trust in the Lord Jesus. But I trust in the Lord Jesus. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm in jail, Paul's saying. I'm in prison here. I may get out. I may not get out. I may not make it. Either way, I'm a winner. You know, if I get to come see you, great. If not, I'll see you in heaven. I, I want to, I, I look forward because I trust my whole life and everything about me. I just trust it in the Lord's hands. I trust in the Lord. And he's not only feeling that on the inside, he's letting it known on the outside. I trust in the Lord. What good words we have here. And this showed Paul's heart. 
his true, complete reliance upon the Lord. And, and he wanted to see Timothy among the Philippians, but, but he recognized that, that it would happen God's way and in God's timing. Now, some have indicated that Timothy was actually in jail with Paul. Some have said that he was just the, the you know, the, uh, someone that was able to come in and continue to stand. Be, you know, he was granted visitors and he was granted guests. And, and, and in this writing, it is coming from Paul and Timothy here and putting it together. So you, you've got to get this mindset. Um, Paul and Timothy are just peas in a pod. They're buddies here. And, and he's right there with him. And, and he, has, he says, I desire to send Timothy unto you. Now, there is no record of Timothy being actually going to the church of Philippi. Okay, there's no record of him actually going or attending there. But he wants to send him if he can't go himself. But Timothy is staying there with him. Now, let's look at verse 20. Verse 20 says, For I have no man likened who will naturally care for your state. Uh, there is, what's that, what's that mean? No man likened who will naturally care for your state. Paul is validating Timothy. He, he's saying, therefore, when, when Paul wanted to send Timothy, he wanted to send his best. There is nobody that I could send to you any better than Timothy. If I was to give a, a letter of reference, a letter of recommendation, it would be my friend, Timothy, my brother, my co-laborer here, uh, he is right here with me. And if I could send somebody, if I couldn't come myself, I'd like to send Timothy there to you. I, my desire is to send him, in fact, shortly. Uh, we've got some things we've got to get taken care of, but as soon as we can, either I'm coming or Timothy's coming. That's the mindset of Paul. You know, he's, he's looking for the Lord even so come, Lord. He's looking for the Lord right then, right there. I mean, he's living in the now, and whatever the Lord has, this is, it, it don't always come in a way that, that we think that it should come. So he's, he's having to wait upon the Lord. The Lord's not worked it out for Timothy to be able to go or Paul to go yet. So he's writing this letter. Let's look at verse 21. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. Paul recognizes just how rare this kind of heart was when he stated, seek their own and not the things which are Jesus Christ. This, this term means it's selfless and desiring to see the mission fulfilled. This guy, Timothy, man, he is just, he's top shelf. He, he desires to do the Lord's will. He's not desiring his own things, but he wants to see the mission completed. It's amazing what the church can do when nobody is seeking the glory for themselves. As I shared with you a couple weeks ago, real servitude, real, being a real servant, actually I shared it Sunday morning. A servant wants to make the one whom they're serving look better, not themselves. You don't have to lift up your name. Uh, how many, you know, I mean, all the coaches and everything else that help that player get to where they are. You know, that's, that's the joy that all those folks have, those trainers and those people in the backdrop. They want to make that person look, uh, succeed and be a success. As we as the body in Christ, if we're trying to make ourselves look better, then we're really not ser Who are we serving? We're being self-serving. Whenever we're working together, whenever we're weaving together and coming together, it's Christ's name that gets glorified. And that, it, that, that's something I want to be a part of. And I know you do too. That's the kind of person Timothy is. Let's look at verse 22. But ye know the proof of him that as a son with the father, he has served with me in the gospel. He's saying, I couldn't send anybody any closer than if he was my own blood. He is my son in the faith. He is the one that I have mentored. He is the one that I've trained. He's the one that I have brought up. He is the one uh, that I, I've got to... Um, tell about he's the one I got to talk about you know I saw something earlier no man will ever be proud of you as a dad is to, uh, no man will ever be as happy for you to see you excel as the dad is to see his son excel further than he is you, you want to see them excel you want to see them go on and do great things that's Paul's ambition for Timothy 
Well, let's look at verses 23 through 24. But Paul, as Paul is going to repeat his desire to come to the Philippians in person, not only to send Timothy to them, but he says here in verse 23, he says, Him therefore I hope to send presently. I'd like to send Timothy right now so soon as I shall see how it will go with him, with me. But I trust in the Lord. There it is again. Isn't that something? I trust in the Lord that I also myself shall come shortly. He's planning to send Timothy, and he's planning to come right along behind him or with him if he can. Perhaps Paul was being careful to avoid the accusations. Paul wants to send Timothy as a temporary representative because he really wants to be there himself. And he clearly told the Philippians that he also wants to, he, I, I, he wants to be there, not just sending Timothy. If I could, I'd be there in the present. Let's go to the second page. I've only got two pages, those of you that are watching. It's going pretty quick tonight. So, verses 25 through 26, Paul writes about Af, uh, Epaphroditus and his coming to the Philippians. So, let me bring you up to speed. I just had a song played, Hang On, Help Is On The Way. Paul's saying, wait a minute. Hang on, help is on the way. I, I, I'm in a position, I can't come to you right now. I'm a little tied up, basically. And he's saying, but I desire to send Timothy with you just as soon as I can. And if Timothy's coming, hopefully I'm going to be coming right along with him. If not, I'll send him out shortly. You, you ever heard of a, uh, of a Baptist minute? I'll be there in a minute. It's a, it takes a little bit longer than a minute, don't it? I think Paul had a desire that I'm going to get there shortly. I'll be there in just a little bit. Well, what's a little bit? How long's that? And I know Fred knows by being on a mission trip, it's hurry up and wait. You, 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 let's everybody get ready. Let's go. And then you sit there and you're waiting. And it's never, it's never on your time schedule. It's never on. Uh, you, when you're there, you're at their mercy. You're at the driver's mercy. You're, you're just waiting. Well, he had a desire. I hope to be there shortly. Paul's not gotten released yet. Timothy, he's not sending. Timothy staying by his side. He's helping doing the writing. He's ministering unto Paul. So here's plan C. You got plan A, plan B, and plan C. I've got to get word back to the Philippians is what Paul's thinking. Who can we send? It is Epaphroditus. Verse 25 says, Yet I supposed it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. Let me read on verse 26. For he longed after you all and was full heaviness because that ye had heard that he had been sick. All right, what's this, what's this talking about? We got to get a little backdrop. There's, there's some parts here that are missing that we just didn't really catch right here as we've, as we've read this. But Philippians knew what it was talking about, and Paul knew what he was talking about. So we, let's do some research. Verse 25 says, I considered it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother. Now, if you are a born-again Christian, you are my brother or my sister. We're family. And he says, I identify with this man, Epaphroditus. He is my brother. Now, remember, he is referring to... Timothy is like a son that he has been mentoring and training, but this man's like a brother. This undoubtedly meant that Epaphroditus took this letter to the Philippians. That's how the letter's going to get going. Keep in mind, Paul's not going to be able to deliver it to him. Timothy's not going to be able to take it. It's plan C. Epaphroditus is going to be able to send this letter. So, he came from Philippi to see Paul, and now Paul is sending him back to Philippi. He says, my brother and fellow worker and fellow soldier. Paul is going to give him uh, this important title. He's also validating him. And he was a man that Paul valued and, and, and honored working in the ministry. Guys, you honored those folks working in the ministry last night. And, and it's, it's encouraging when we lift up one another, when we, when we compliment one another. And Paul is definitely complimenting this man, Epaphroditus, and the work that he's doing. 
Uh, Epaphroditus wasn't looking for the pat on the back, but it's always good to get one and, and give one. Uh, he was a man that Paul valued and partnered. Notice what he said. He says three things. He called him a brother. I, I, I've often get asked, what would you like to be called whenever I came here or in the ministry and so forth? Do you, do you want to be called Jason? I've been called a lot worse. Uh, do you want to be called a reverend? Want to be called doctor? I'm trying. Do you want to be called, uh, what, do you, what would you prefer to be called in, in genuineness, no matter what? I get behind it, brother. Because if I'm your brother, then that means that you are my either my brother or my sister in Christ and that we share the same father. That's what I would much rather be called, is to be called a brother in Christ. And that is my hope and my goal. And when you call someone brother or sister, that is an admirable thing to call them, a companion in the labor. We are serving the Lord, and we're doing it as fellow soldiers for the Lord. We are on the same battlefield. Now, we are serving our Lord. In some places, we do that in different counties, countries, and regions, but we are on the same battlefield, and the battlefield for our Lord is fellow soldiers speaking and going and doing the work. Your messenger and the one who ministered to my needs. Now, what needs did Paul have met? We had to go on forward as we will read later when we get to Philippians 4.18. Now, we're only in chapter 2, but we're going to find out about this Epaphrodites. And what he did is he brought a gift of financial support and help from the church of Philippi when they find out that Paul is in prison at Rome. I mean, this man came to do a ministry and to serve on behalf of his community in town. Something's going to happen, happen to Epaphroditus while he is there, though. He, he, he ministered, and that means to minister that he had the idea of like a priestly service, that he came not only to bring a sacrifice or to bring a gift unto Paul, but he ministered unto him. He loved on him. He, he cared for him. And do you know what joy that must have been to see an old friend come all the way from Philippi to come and to, and to just express and to share a love and a heartfelt concern for this dear brother and bringing this gift? It, it would be like much like our, this church right here. Helping out a missionary out on the field. They're struggling. They don't know how they're going to get by. Seems like the doors are going to close. They don't know where their next meal may be coming from. They're trying to help people that are in depressional state and difficulty, and they're wondering where's their help going to come from, and they don't know what's going to happen. Or, and yet, all of a sudden, a church shows up, and a representative from that church shows up with a gift to say, hang on, help is on the way. I'll be here just as fast as I can. I'll do my best. And you bring this gift to them. Do you know the encouragement that that must have brought into Paul? I don't know. He may have been in a, in a low state. Now, I know count all things joy, but there's sometimes in human life, we don't, everything's not always enjoyable, even though we should always have our joy. But we, in, in this, he, he, was, you know, he said, look, you ministered unto me, and I'm so thankful that you ministered unto me. Uh, as we went to Clear Creek, I talked to you about how many times I would go to that little mailbox and not knowing how I was going to get something taken care of and somebody had given a, a donation or a gift or I go in and there in the fox's den on that table, um, you know, Mother's Day be coming up and I could find me a gift right there to bring home to Susan. No, I don't know if that'd be the case or not, but I need to go back and find another gift. But there would be something there that you'd be like somebody provided and somebody given. A church would come and drop off a donation. What a, what a blessing that was. That was what Epaphroditus did for Paul. When he found out you're in prison. And you remember? They knew that Paul was not afraid to go to jail for the Lord because of the Philippian jailer that put him in jail, that they beat him, and that they uh, hurt him, and yet he's in there singing songs. So he knows he's no stranger to the jail, and they take a gift to him. Well, you, but here's what else. He said, because you had heard that he had been sick. Now, I'm sure, and I, I know I keep using Fred as a reference, but many of you all have been on mission trips. Stanley, you've been on mission trips. I know Martha and Brian's been on mission trips. Who else here has been on mission trips out of the country? 
John and Jeanette have. You're correct. You've been to Brazil on different occasions. Anyone else? You know when you take in a team, they give you some, I, you take some pills, you take some things, and some places they say don't drink the water and so forth. But there's sometimes when you go on a trip, inevitably somebody gets sick. Uh, somebody is quarantined in their room because they, I mean, they're, they're just sick, okay? And you can fill that in with the gaps, okay? Something happened to Epaphroditus. I guess that he went to Rome and drank the water. I, I don't know what made him sick. But he got so sick that he was sick near unto death. It don't seem fair, does it? He's doing a work for the Lord. He hears of Paul. The, the, I mean, the apostle Paul here that's out there in jail. He's going to minister and to take a gift to Paul. How many of us would say, I, nothing's going to happen to me. I'm going to be just fine. I'm not going to get sick. Everything's going to be okay. Listen, that's good to think like that, but nothing. Show me where it says in the Bible, you're never going to have and encounter no problems, no difficulties, or no sickness just because you were stepping out to go do the Lord's will. Scriptures like this right here, Epaphroditus went to go see Paul and got sick. So sick that it was near unto death. But God had other plans, and he spared him. Thank God for miracles, amen? Amen. I, I, I'm thankful for those miracles. That doesn't happen every time. So Paul could have just said, or God could have just said, Epaphrodites, Epaphrodites, you were going and you were doing a work for the Lord and I called you home. I've heard of people preaching or teaching Sunday school classes and preaching from the pulpit, step down and die. What a way to go. What a way to, uh, hey, you're doing your work. I'd much rather be found being faithful, doing the service, what God's called us to do, than I would be idle and dormant and not been doing what I was called to do. He was in action and got sick. Verse 7, and, and, and here's the thing. He was so sick unto death that somehow, I don't know how that letter got back, but somewhere word circulated, Paul's in prison, Timothy's there's with him. Now Epaphroditus has went and he's sick. Word has traveled back to Philippi. Epaphrodites, that guy that you sent, he's sick. Well, did Paul receive the gift and the offering and all that? Well, yeah, but Epaphrodites is not doing well. So he is the next logical individual that Paul would like to send back. Verse 27. For indeed, he was sick, nigh to death, but God had mercy on him. Aren't you thankful for God's mercy? Woo. And not on him only, but me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. What, do, what does that mean? When I read that, I would be brokenhearted. Epaphrodites got sick and died, and all he was trying to do was help me. Thinking of Paul speaking here, okay? I, I mean, when, you, when God spared Epaphroditus unto death, it would aggrieve me unto death if, if he had died just trying to help me. I didn't want him to be harmed. I don't want to hurt nobody. I don't want nobody to hurt me. I'm just wanting to be, I'm in, I, I, that's why I'm in jail. I'm trying to be faithful. I, I don't want no trouble, and I sure don't want nobody to die as a result of trying to help me. It would have grieved me unto death is what Paul's saying. But when he healed him, it healed me too. It spared my heart. That spared my soul because I, I, I my, my, my soulfulness here because I didn't want anything to happen to him. And I'm sure, no doubt, Paul prayed and petitioned on Epaphroditus' behalf. But this is a praise, praise, praise report. Verses 28 through 30, and we're going to close. Verse 28 says, I sent him, therefore, the more carefully that when you see him again, you may rejoice with all gladness, and hold such in reputation. Because for the work of Christ, he was nigh unto death, not regarding his life to supply your lack of service toward me. It says in verse 28, I sent him the more carefully. It means that I sent him eagerly. 
I want you to see what God did. I want you to see the miracle that God worked out. I, I, I would love to have been there. I'd like to send Timothy, but I'm going to send you one even better, Epaphroditus. Look what God has done. Look how God's restored. Look how God's healed. And my friends, if God's healed you, if God's fixed you, you are a walking miracle, number one, through salvation. But I know that he's done things physically for us. We've asked and we've petitioned on others' behalfs. We need to be grateful and eager to give that report and give God recognition for it. Verse 30 said, because for the work of Christ, he was nigh unto death. What a strong point it was for the work of Christ that Epaphroditus came so close to death. Even though his work was mostly that of just being a messenger. You say, well, what's so important about Epaphroditus? Why is his name? Why do you keep saying that name? What great work did he do? You know what great work he did? He delivered the gift and he delivered a letter. You say, what's so big about that? It was because he did it for the Lord. You don't have to have your name in light saying that you preach between uh, multitudes and huge and all these vast things. Just be faithful in what God commissioned you to do. And he goes back and he delivers that letter to them and he did it faithfully and eagerly and was excited to share about what God had done and, and, and how he moved and how he did the task. He took the provisions and he came back with a letter. And I think that it's good to take time to recognize someone. And, and, I, and you're saying, well, that's vain glory. You're, we're here to glorify God. I'm going to tell you, when you thank other people, you're glorifying the Lord. Thank God for using them. Thank God and encourage one another. Be an encouragement to each other, not a discourager, but recognizing brothers and sisters in Christ and for their faithfulness and for their service and appreciation. I thank you all so much. I didn't do anything yesterday except eat some of that cheesecake with stevia in it. That uh, uh, you all did it yesterday. And God showed up and showed off through you. And it's amazing when a church comes together with the mindset of giving God the glory and not seeking it individually and for themselves or for their own ministry or for their namesake. The more you glorify Him, really the brighter that you do shine and look. So always point to Jesus Christ. Dear Heavenly Father, tonight as we've taken this section of chapter 2 in the book of Philippians, we need to be reminded of the joy. Lord, we need to be mindful of the joy that we have just from chapter 1, Lord, the, the joy in suffering because we know that ministry is not always easy. Ministry is most often messy. But there is joy in the suffering. We know that you suffered, but it was for our joy. We also see here in chapter 2 that there is joy in the serving. And I am thankful for the servants. Servants who don't seek their own glory, but seek your glory and to make your name glorified and lifted up. Lord, we'll be seeing, Lord, that there's joy in believing in chapter 3. And we also know that there is joy in giving. And we know we can't outgive God. For that, we say we love you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank our online congregation for tuning in, and we're going to go into our prayer request and things this evening. As I want to be...